Ladies and gents, world conquerors, welcome to Old World. My name, of course, is Obud Potato, and this is a brand new game made by the lead designer of Civilization 4. Now, um, if you've ever played Civilization before, Old World will be very familiar to you. I don't want to say that it's just a carbon copy of Civilization, because it's not, but it is, I would say, the chassis of Civilization with a bunch of really interesting, I guess, dynastic elements that are sort of layered on top that allow you to create a uh, an incredible dynasty and, uh, and play through the ages as a bunch of different characters. Right, so we're going to jump on in and uh, we're going to choose a leader in the first instance. There's a whole bunch of, uh, of ancient 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 leaders that we can choose from romulus of course the founder of uh, the founder of rome why don't we play as this dude why don't we play as this dude that seems like a, a fairly good idea now of course as you can see romulus has got all of his own stats he's got his own starting text uh, he's got his own starting laws unique buildings uh, unique units etc all of that will be discussed as indeed we dive into the game, uh, but we'll just play on uh, we'll play on the just difficulty for now, I think, and uh, and we'll play on medium and uh, and seaside. Sure, let's jump into it. Right. So the first thing that I should note is that this game is an early access, and therefore what you're seeing is a is a pre-release copy, and therefore everything is entirely liable to change. And indeed, I'm certain that stuff will change. Of course, given that this is the first episode of the series, I'm going to be tutorializing as much as one can tutorialize a game like this. Uh, but you know, from the second episode onwards, we will uh, will probably be uh, will probably be 100% just jumping on into the nitty gritty of managing an empire. And of course, if you're brand new here, then hello, I'm Open Potato. I do long form strategy content. Uh, right, so. Uh, we are playing as Romulus. This is this is you know the the first the first screen that will greet you when indeed you jump on into a brand new game. And as I'm sure you can see, very 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 highly similar to uh, to Civilization. It's got this same uh, sort of grid based system. You start out with a individual settler, which you are uh, which you're able to to plonk down and turn into a city at any given time. Um, I think we are just going to found a city right uh, right where we are. That seems totally reasonable. Now, the first big decision that we need to make is who is going to found the city. So, we could uh, we could find found the capital with the Fabius family, and they are champions, and they give us a whole bunch of military-based perks, as you can see. All cities, plus two red shields per year. We'll talk about the red shields in just a second. Uh, all cities plus 50% city defense, etc, etc, etc. Or instead, we could found the uh, found the capital, the Claudius family could uh, could found the capital. By the way, in case you're interested, this is the family name and each and every family uh, is, is a little bit different and they offer a bunch of different bonuses. And they can really, really change the way that you play your game. Um, I think that we'll start with the... We'll probably just start with the Fabius family. Ooh, the Julius family. Actually, tell you what, I like the idea. I like the idea of founding a Roman city with, uh, with the name Julius in. So, what is this going to give us? This is going to give us orders. We're going to chat about orders in just a second. It's going to give us civics. Also, very, very important. We'll talk about that uh, in a little bit. Okay, so the first thing that we'll do, we'll get this city founded. And there we go. Uh, thank you. It's actually not a bad idea to have the tutorial uh, the tutorial slides occasionally pop up and remind me of what I need to chat about. Right, so let's talk about orders in the very first instance. Now, this is one of the most unique aspects of this game, and I dig it. I dig it so much. So if we take a little gander down to the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, you can see that there is this number seven, and this represents the number of orders that we can issue to all of our units over the course of this turn. Now, different actions cost different number of orders, but for example, I've got a scout unit right here. Again, I'm assuming that you at least know a little bit about how civilization works and, you know, how scout units are good for sussing out territory, etc, etc, etc. But yeah, so scout selected, we'll deal with that in just a minute. So as you can see, if I want to move my scout to, well, if I wanted to move my scout to over here, for example, it would cost me one order. Now, not only will it cost me an order, it will cost me a, a little pip on the top of this scout's head. So I am limited to to an extent about how far I can move the scout. However, in Civilization, you're able to move the scout like, you know, two or three tiles tops or, uh, you know, during a, during a good, uh, during a good bit of, good, a good bit of turn. Uh, however, 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 there is nothing stopping me just from going right to the edge of the map 
over here. So I'm going to consume three orders, and I'm going to send my scout right onto the top of a hill. He can see a little bit more when he uh, arrives at the top of the hill. But, you know, I don't have to stop there, and indeed, I'm not going to stop there. Why the heck would I? I can just keep going. Absolutely, let's just keep going. Oh, what is this? This is a an arid hill, uh, which is fine. We can construct some resources on there uh, at a later date. That's another problem. And for my last order, I will get him to move over there. And we have discovered what looks like some uh, some salt. Yeah, brilliant. Some salt, which we can also build a mine on top of. Okay, cool. So that's, first of all, how the scout works. That's how orders work. We're left with two orders over the course of, uh, of this turn. Actually, not terrible at all from my limited experience that I've had with this, uh, with this early access with this early access build it seems like the number of orders that you get is you know reasonably reasonably comprehensive i would say you're you get a you get a lot of them uh, and you don't really need to use them all the time or at least i haven't been using all of my orders each and every turn you'll see actually next turn i will get 17.1 orders so this game you know on the surface may indeed look like a uh, like a fairly a fairly interesting strategy game, but behind it there is very very much a, a sort of back end spreadsheet level and i do really really like the fact that this game gives you so much information so much information that is forward facing that allows you to make decisions. So as you can see, uh, I'm going to get 17.1 orders next turn. So I'm going to get 17 orders because it rounds, uh, rounds down. Uh, 17 orders, uh, so that's great. And 15 of that is going to come from my city. And the other two is coming from my legitimacy. Brilliant. Okay, so happy days. Right, well, uh, let's chat about workers next, okay? I mean, workers work exactly the same in, uh, in this here game as they work in Civilization. You move them to a... You move them to a tile, and you make the improvements on said tile. Each and every improvement that you make to a tile is added to your city. It's uh, it's quite a, it's quite simple. I think honestly, starting off with a farm is uh, is quite a good first option. I I think that would be uh, that would be great to get done. Now, in order to build a farm, in order to build a farm, it will cost me twenty wood. Now I've got plenty of plenty 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 of wood right there, uh, and it's going to give us five extra. Five extra food per turn, which is very, very nice. We'll talk a little bit about food and the mechanics specifically uh, as we go. But for now, I think we're just going to start work on this farm. So let's move our worker over here. And we've got a list of buildings that we can potentially build on this tile. I don't want to build any of these shrines or any of that nonsense. I just want to build a farm because a farm is going to really make a massive difference to the growth rate of my city. Okay, great. So that's pretty much all of the actions that we can dispense with on the first turn dealt with. Uh, we are still left with this... Thank you. We are still left with uh, this warrior unit right over here. However, this warrior unit can't actually move anywhere because we don't have any, uh, any orders left to spend on him. Not a problem. Not a problem at all. Also, this, uh, this, this ancient ruin thing here, we'll talk a little bit about that next turn when we actually utilize it. Uh, but for now, let's, uh, let's chat very, very briefly about the mechanics of the city. So, the city is able to actually uh, manufacture a whole bunch of units and or buildings to help buff statistics and stats and improve everything. Uh, so, as you can see across the top here, we can see these little pips that, uh, that fall down indicate exactly how much of a certain resource the city is producing. So as you can see, training, uh, which is the, the red shield over here, we are producing 10 in this city. Uh, we're producing 12 civics, uh, 12 science, uh, 2 food, and 41.8 uh, income. Right, just to briefly talk about what each and every one of these things do, Money. Money is used to purchase other resources, and you can increase money uh, by building hamlets and markets, etc. Money is just like you know, it's the currency of the game. We all, we all know what money is. Uh, food food is uh, food is the determinant of, on how fast your city grows. So if we take a little look down to the bottom left here, you can see that as soon as Roma uh, reaches 100 food, uh, then uh, we will level up and we will gain another citizen in our city. Very, very cool. I like it a lot. Uh, this is the iron rate. Iron rate allows us to build stuff such as warriors and whatnot. So, for example, if I was to build a warrior in this city, it would consume 50 iron in the process. Uh, wood, we've already used wood to build a farm. It's uh, another resource that you can use to build buildings. Stone, another resource that you can use to build buildings and other stuff as well. Uh, the science rate, used to research tech and... Um, of course, we'll talk about the tech tree as we go. Uh, civics, civics is probably... <laughs> I guess this is like the most important, yeah, I guess this is probably one of the most important numbers that you'll see 
in this game. Uh, so at the moment, our civics rate is, is plus 12, and all of that 12 is coming from Rome right here. Now, the civics, the civics rate, I guess you could say, is a city's production. Although it also can be used for like a bunch more stuff than just production. But yeah, for now, let's stick with that. It's like a city's production, but it can also be used uh, a little bit more widely uh, as well. Okay, uh, what else have we got? Uh, we got the training rate used to train military units. Yes, so this is like, I guess, military production points that we can that we can use to, uh, to train units. We can also use it to increase the number of orders. So uh, th there is... There is a, a sneaky little way that if you run out of orders or if, you know, perhaps you're in the middle of combat and you feel like you don't have enough orders, uh, you can actually, you can actually do a couple of things. You can actually, we can actually, uh, da, 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 da. yeah, let's go over to, let's go over to the scout. We can actually click on the scout and say, hey, scout, I'm going to force you to march, right? So if we were to do that, then it would cost us 50 training points. You know what? Screw it. I'll just do it. 50, let's, uh, let's get you to march. And that will, uh, that will give us, that will give us the ability to move an additional couple of points, if indeed we had the orders, but we, uh, but we don't have the orders at the moment, and also you're fatigued, so that was, you know, just train 50 training points just down the drain. No worries, no worries at all, we got plenty of training points, I'm not, I'm not entirely bothered. Uh, yeah, don't worry about the scout, that's not a problem at all. Okay, so that's all that we really want to discuss on this turn. Now, this element up here, which we will discuss in a little bit, is, uh, is the hierarchy mechanic mechanics and the the dynasty mechanics i guess which is very very cool indeed for now why don't we have a little look at research we can have a little look at the tech tree right over here and you can see this is it this is it this is what we've got so we've got iron working straight off the bat that's one of the starting techs from uh, from starting with uh, with rome or starting with romulus i should say uh, and he starts with a warrior class unlocked which is very very cool also starts with divination divination which is uh you know a couple of unique shrine buildings as well which is very very cool is there anything that we care about specifically in terms of research do we want to research anything right now um okay so stone cutting will give us the quarry which is five stone per year if we if we build the improvement uh and it also gives us a opportunity to get a stone boost we'll talk about that in a second as well uh trapping trapping could give us a camp and a slinger which is a ranged unit or we could get administration which uh, unlocks the treasury and or not and or just and the granary uh why don't we why don't we roll with administration for now yeah sure let's uh let's give that a shot okay so administration administration it is brilliant 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 Thank you very much. Right, four years left of administration. That is determined by our science rate. Very, very cool. Okay, so that is the fundamentals. That is the basics. What is this? Centralization or vassalage? Nobles in the court insist that we clarify our stance on administration. Do we support the policies of centralization or vassalage? Okay, so this is the sort of event that will occasionally pop up. And this is also, I guess, an event which is loosely connected to uh, to dynasties. Well, not this event specifically, but you'll see events like this uh, happening on occasion. So we could either go for uh, for centralization, which will give us plus 25% civics. Which, would, which corresponds to an increase of 3, uh, and 25% increase in science, which corresponds to an increase of plus 3 again, uh, and that will cost us 400, uh, that will cost us 400 civics. Of course, we've got 800 in the bank, so that's not a problem at all. Uh, vassalage, trust our subjects to govern, minus 50% unit consumption. I mean, I feel like that early, that early civics boost and that early science boost is, is fantastic. We can, of course, not decide right now, or uh, or the court can choose the laws. We can we can deal with that a little bit later. Tell you what, why don't I little have a little look at the uh, at the laws screen? Yeah. So as you can see, the laws screen, the laws screen is where we can decide to spend some of our civics. Now I said that civics were were used to were used to buy more than just you know buildings in a city, and indeed that is the case. I mean, what do we want? I think I want centralization, right? I feel like the Roman Empire was historically unbelievably centralized. I think that was the case anyway. Sure, let's go for it. Let's uh let's go for it. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Centralization. Yes, please. Okay. That's uh that's fantastic. Okay. 
Brilliant, 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 brilliant. So now we've got a nice little boost to our science, a nice little boost to our civics rate. I can't really complain about that at all. Okay, uh, fantastic. What do we want to chat about next? Well, we've chatted about we've chatted about civics, we've chatted about science, we've chatted about stone. As you can see, we can buy and sell these resources as and when we wish to do so. So if we need, you know, a couple of extra stone for a certain project, that's definitely something that we can do. Uh, you know, at a pinch, we can just. Uh, we can just buy the resources that we need. I tell you what, why don't I move my warrior here? I'm going to move my warrior over to the uh, to the ancient ruins, which is great. Graffiti are scrolled across this ruin structure. Graffiti are? Graffiti is? Hmm. Uh, this ruin structure. One of our court scholars recognized it as vulgar speech, a Latin dialect used by the lower classes of several extinct tribes. There are very few examples of this traditionally unwritten language. Uh, display the graffiti in our palace yard. That will give us 30 culture. We'll chat about culture in just a second. Or study the writing and try to replicate it and give us an immediate science boost. Um, or give us plus two legitimacy. I think, to be honest, we'll chat about legitimacy in a little bit. I'm going to take the culture. The culture is very, very cool. Uh, and it actually transitions us quite nicely into chatting about culture. So, much like the growth rate of the city, you know, when you hit a certain amount of food points your your city levels up and you get an additional citizen culture is kind of the same when a city's culture fills up a positive event occurs uh, the city's overall culture level affects what improvements and wonders can be built improve culture by building shrines and theaters and if you'll recall some uh, some of the special the special unlocks that i've got as rome uh, include a couple of uh, a couple of bespoke a couple of bespoke shrines which is very very nice indeed okay nothing really other than that in terms of administration i think we are straight up just ready to continue exploring with our scout over here yep aha wonderful another ancient ruins a sacred tomb our expedition approaches an ancient monument the structure appears uh, to be the tomb of a great leader an inscription reads pass by whoever you may be i was once king of kings grudge me not therefore this piece of earth that covers my body uh we can become gracious okay so this is another fantastic example of uh, of how this game differs from civilizations so you play as this guy so at the moment this guy is uh, is romulus he is the founder he is the guy that i'm playing at right now and of course he's got his own little stats over here he's got you know courage discipline etc 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 he has his own stats so we can actually modify him as we go uh, as we get uh, events such as this so what do we do uh, we can become gracious and that will give us plus two charisma I mean, that's really, really nice. For leaders and governors, charisma increases civics. For generals, charisma increases the unit's defense strength. I mean, that's great. A plus four boost to civics? I mean, that is like a that is like a plus 25%. In fact, it's just a bit bigger than that, actually. Almost a plus, it's plus 30% boost to our current, uh, our current civics production rate, which is very, very cool indeed. There will be no king but me destroy it, plus two legitimacy, or we could get 65 science. Again, I'm doubling down on civics. I'm doubling down on civics because I feel like that is, uh, that is the right thing to play for at the moment. Cool. All right, what is this? A seedy messenger, a strange woman from an unknown tribe, shuffles into your court, looking everywhere but at you. She suggests that unless you're able to demonstrate your munificence, the Danes will take everything from you. Right, okay, so that, again, transitions us into chatting about tribes and competing players. Uh, so this is our this is our first contact with uh, a tribe, which is not great. Um, if I want to not declare war on them, it seems like I'm going to need to pay them 80 gold, which is not ideal at all. Uh, be gone, you wrench. I mean, I'm optimistic about destroying a tribe in combat. I am the, the, what, what will become the Roman Empire. Uh, and, you know, I do have a bunch of combat bonuses. However, however, I kind of feel like I'm just going to pay you off and tell you to just get out of here. Right, so the tribes, the tribes kind of exist as like, I guess like pseudo city states uh, in, in this, uh, in this here game. Now, there are other playable factions. There are other people that we will come across in the world. And in, in fact, I'm expecting to come across them at some point very, very soon indeed. But you know, you should know that, uh, that there are also, there are also, there are also tribes. 
and therefore it's important that we uh, that we keep on the good side of them. Okay, so as you can see, we've got 10 orders. We're actually totally fine for orders at this moment in time. I'm going to move my sword men down here uh, to this city site over, over yonder, and we're going to get a settler in just about three years, which is fine. And that is going to be uh, that is going to be an opportunity to expand our borders a little bit. And once we've you know stopped faffing around with uh, with the settlers, then we can move on and deal with some more stuff. All right, two years out on the farm, which is grand. That's going to give us a nice little growth rate boost. So that is good too. Okay, let's start with this. Start with this. Okay, so that 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 was a little notification telling me that we can in fact harvest some resources with our scout. So for example, we're on wheat at the moment. Unfortunately, I'm too far away from a friendly city to uh, to take advantage of the harvesting of the resource, but that's not necessarily a problem. Uh, it's just just a little quirk. Fine, keep exploring with this scout. That's not a problem at all. Okay. Yeah, the Danes, in 25 years, it's going to level up. So we've got to be wary of that. Probably don't want to leave them around for too long. I mean, we will deal with them at some point. There's just not necessarily a priority right at this moment in time, I will say. I tell you what, this area is very, very well defended. Rome is definitely going to be a city that's going to be uh, difficult to, to breach. That's for sure. Yeah, and so just like that, we end the turn. We've got seven actions still left, or seven orders still left, which is grand. We're two years out from administration, which is also good, and the farm has just finished up, which is fantastic. That is really, really good. Now, what can we build? What do we want to build? We can build a mine right over here, or we can build a Shrine of Mars, which is an urban building, gives us two training and two culture, and enables the Acolyte. Now, what the heck is the Acolyte? So an acolyte is a ah so an acolyte is a type of I guess civilian you could say that is uh, that is active on a certain tile right so let's go over here and let's immediately pop down the recommended structure the shrine of mars it's the best structure frankly as far as i can see yeah, I mean, look, we're going to get all of these shrines. We're going to get all these shrines. We have to get all these shrines, to be honest. And enabling the Acolyte in the first instance would be really, really good. Uh, let's loop this scout around. Let's see what's over here. Again, we can harvest the salt, but we're a little bit far away from our, uh, from our home city. So that's fine. And look at this. Okay, we can harvest the Sorghum. Not entirely sure what that is, but it gives us four food, so that's a nice little boost. Very, very happy with that. We've got a settler that's coming uh, coming online very, very soon indeed. Can settlers come online? You bet your bottom dollar that they can. It's going to be great. All right, fantastic. I think that's just about all that we can do over the course of this turn. So that's great. Your capital has finished training a new settler. Settler is a key to expanding the empire. Don't worry about it. I understand the importance of a settler, and indeed, I am going to get myself a settler uh, right over here as quickly as we possibly can. Right, so let me bring the settler down and round here. Uh, now, this is the opportunity. This is the opportunity that I was talking about on the very first turn that, of course, I, I wasted. Uh, we can force the unit to march. Now, if we do that, then we enter marching mode, and it can move whilst it's fatigued, i.e. all of these pips have been expended. Uh, so if we do that, which I think I'm going to do, we spend 50 points, and then we are able to spend double the number of orders in order to move the unit. So now it's going to cost me two uh, orders to move to this tile, whereas if it wasn't fatigued, it would only take one order. So, uh, so yeah, that's something to consider as well. I'm just having a little look around here to see exactly if there is anything that we really need to be worried about before founding a city here. Yeah, so Mount Etna, Mount Vesuvius, the Alps. I don't exactly know why the heck all a whole bunch of, uh, of Italian... Yeah, I don't know why the Alps is right next to us. I guess that's cool. I guess that must be like a, like a little founding bonus that we get. Did I miss the opportunity to harvest salt? I did indeed. Okay, so I've missed out on a little bit of culture there. That's fine. Okay, keep doing that. Can we harvest the marble over here? We can indeed harvest the marble. Harvest everything. Harvest. This isn't a scout. It's just a harvesting machine. I like it. All right, wonderful. All of these resources have been harvested, which is exceptional. Right, so let's see. We don't even have... I didn't even... <laughs> that's... 
Don't even have enough orders. Don't even have enough orders to uh, to spend on my to spend on my settler. But that's totally totally fine. Let's choose production of something in Rome, shall we? Now we can issue a decree, and that is in fact a repeatable uh, objective. Uh, we could do that. We could do that, or we could do a festival, or we could do, or we could do a council. On completion, plus sixty percent civics, plus sixty percent money. Uh, yeah, I mean, why the heck not, right? Let's absolutely do that. Let's absolutely do that. So throw all of our points into the council, and let's see what the heck happens, shall we? All right, let's also choose some research. We completed administration. So administration gave us the treasury and the granary. The granary is a uh, is a unit, as a unit, a, a building that we can actually build on a tile, and the treasury is a unit. No, the treasury is a building that we build inside the city. So that's something to consider. Trapping. I'm not super bothered about trapping, to be honest. Stone cutting does probably make a little bit more sense, given that we will need access to stone at some point, regardless of what we do. Uh, yeah. So that's cool. Am I not able to... Am I not able to choose stone cutting? Why am I not able to choose stone cutting from here? I have absolutely no idea. Okay, well, we'll choose rhetoric then, apparently, which is tragedy. Uh, but that's okay. All right, end the year. Let's go to the... Let's go to the next, uh, let's go to the next turn. Alrighty, 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 alrighty. So, there was just a pop-up about marriage, but, uh, don't worry about that until a little bit later. Let's force a march, and let's actually legitimately see if we can try and get our caravan into a good site, into a good, uh, into a good position here. So we've got silver over there, we've got some more of this sorghum stuff it's not a bad place to found i guess we'll found i guess we'll found the city over here now who do we want to found the city with claudius will give us increased growth rate i.e food growth rate fabius is again more uh more of this training nonsense however we've already got rome and rome is a fabian city Claudius seat. I don't really think that I'm that bothered. Although Claudius can buy tiles, which is kind of nice. That is very, very nice indeed. Can hurry production with money. That's Valerius. That's a pretty unique, uh, pretty unique gig there. Or uh, Julius. Oh, in fact, no. This is a Julius city, isn't it? Yeah, of course, it's a uh, a Julius city. I think Valerius is actually pretty darn good. Let's go with a Valerius city, shall we? Absolutely. Okay, so Antium, we've got it. We've got a... We've got a brand new city. All right, wonderful. Let's keep on expanding a little bit. As you can see, we now have a huge, 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 huge number of orders that are at our disposal. Aha! We can actually access this. You are known as the Explorer. Cool. Okay. Uh, Kongaman the Explorer. Nice. Ruins explored, 300. And uh, legitimacy is now increased to 30. Monuments of law. Explorers come across a series of weathered monuments lost in the undergrowth. Upon closer inspection, the structures appear to be inscribed with the laws of a forgotten city. I mean, we're either deciding between a boost of 150 stone or 100 civics. I think I'm going to take the civics because, yes, absolutely. Uh, so, barbarians exist in this game too. Barbarians are very much like barbarians in civilization. They're not like city-states. They're not like other playable units. They are literally just barbarians, and they are awful. Right, what do we want to build? What do we want to build here? Uh, we need a minimum culture. We need a minimum level of culture before being able to build the treasury. As you can see, uh, we're not up to that level yet. Our, our current culture level is weak and that is not good in fact that is very very not good however as soon as we finish up this uh, shrine of mars that's going to give us a consistent culture boost which is very very nice indeed uh, we are able to output a pretty large number of uh, a pretty large number of civics at the moment also we're doing very very well financially as well that's very very cool i'll tell you what why don't we do why don't we do a festival? We might as well do a festival for a little bit. We'll do a festival, and then we will get some warriors built. In fact, I'll queue up two warriors after the festival. Might not stick with that build order, but, you know, I think that that's, uh, that's good enough for now. 
in the city of uh, what is this antium yes antium i think we're going to build the treasury straight away that's going to give us a 10 income boost it's going to cost us 20 20 stone but that's totally fine it's going to take a good uh, a good wee while to get that done but again i can just about endure that so that leaves us with what 10 that leaves us with 10 orders i feel like that's pretty irritating antium has reached developing culture fantastic uh, a group of laborers who decided to join your workforce, granting you a new worker. That is brilliant. We've gained a worker in Antium, which is fantastic. What do we want to get built? We could build the Shrine of Venus, which would be great. That would be good. Shrine of Diana. Yeah, that's also good. I think, to be honest... To be honest, I think probably the Shrine of... Probably the Shrine of Venus, I think. I don't imagine that I'll be producing that many units from Antium. But you never know. Uh, you never know at all. Yeah, let's get the Shrine of Venus down here. Again, I hopefully want to end up building a city that is founded by Fabius. And then I imagine the Fabius family, that is. And I imagine that that will be the city that deals mostly with, uh, mostly with the output of units. Okay, cool. Right, brilliant. Your congoman has changed the explorer. Uh, your congoman describes your recent ac accomplishments, and improving it increases your legitimacy in the eyes of the people. I'll show them who's legitimate. Brilliant. So as you can see, my official title has actually changed. Uh, it's uh, It used to be King Romulus the Founder, and now it's King Romulus the Explorer, which is just wonderful. And uh, as I've already as I've already mentioned, we gain a couple of extra little uh, little traits with uh, with that, which is nice. Always helps out. Oh, ho, 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 we're about to start a dynasty. Now, this is the only element of the game that I haven't really touched on thus far, but now we're going to touch on it. And this is uh, this is the dynastic element. This is the this is the start of something brilliant. So a marriage offer. A marriage proposal has arrived from the Julius family for the King Romulus... For, the ki for King Romulus the Explorer. What do you think of these? Plotia Julia the Forester is the best option, or Hortensia Julia Romana is the best option. I mean, we are... I can't help but feel that we may indeed be somewhat related, um, given that we are, you know, also of the Julius family, but that's okay. Uh, yeah. What am I doing? Uh, I need to go back into the marriage screen. I need to go in here. Okay. So, 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 so. This is the, this is the inheritance. This is the inheritance screen right here. So this is our mother. This is us right over here. Uh, and this is, of course, Remus. The iconic story of Romulus and, uh, Romulus and Remus. And, uh, yeah, so he is the next in line for the throne, if indeed I was to die. However, I kind of want to address the marriage proposal first, so that we can maybe boot my brother out of, uh, of the line of succession, which would be brilliant. Very, very nice indeed. Okay, so who's the best, who's the best wife for me at the moment? Uh, it's probably... I mean... You're not bad. You're not bad at all. Discipline 2, Wisdom 2. Dowry will give us uh, 15, 15 civics. So that's quite nice. 15 civics again, minus money. I mean, you are... I mean, don't get me wrong. You're not bad at all. Because you're a forester. Because you're a forester, though... Because you're a forester, you do give a plus 50% output to lumber mills. Not really sure that that's what I'm bothered about, though. I think you're probably better just because you just give us more stuff. You do cost us a little bit of money, but, you know, I think that's okay. So let's go. Let's go with that. And there we go. Just like that, we are able to get ourselves a wife, which is wonderful. And now, as you can see, my family tree has, uh, has expanded. So... So, 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 so. We gotta be hoping, we gotta, 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 gotta be hoping for uh, for the birth of a child in order to try and ensure that we are able to control who inherits the uh, inherits the leadership of the kingdom next. As you can see, we have a primogeniture 
law in place at the moment, which means that the oldest child inherits the throne, or inherits the, the crown, I guess, inherit, inherits leadership. Uh, we can actually change that if indeed we want to spend some civics points, but there's no real need to do that at this moment in time. Um, also, I guess, you know, there are reasons why we would want Remus to become uh, to become leader, you know, it's it's absolutely something that we could uh, that we could get uh, that we could have. However, he is vengeful against me, which uh, which just ain't great, just ain't great at all. Right, I think yeah, I think we're we're in an okay situation at the moment. Let me have a little look. We can indeed deal with the barbarians. In fact, we are going to deal with the barbarians. I think, to be honest, they're probably slightly stronger than I am at this moment in time, but that's fine. Choose an ambition. It's time to choose an ambition. What would we like to aspire to do? Well, we could indeed aspire to control six quarries. And upon completion of this ambition, we will receive ten legitimacy. And we require six quarries. Uh, Valerius memory, pursued our ambition, plus 40 opinion for 40 years. So, yeah. So, this would be the ambition of the Valerius family. And that will improve their opinion of us, which is great. Or control four cities desired by the Julius Statesman. And that will also give us 10 legitimacy. Uh, however, we're halfway there on this already. And I think, to be honest, expanding, expanding our cities is going to be a priority at this moment in time. Yeah, the strength of these barbarians, I... Don't really know, actually, how strong they are. Skirmisher, three attack, three attack, two movement, and two, you can see down at the bottom over there. Uh, I mean, we are stronger. We are slightly stronger. I don't know if they are alone, though. So that does give me an element uh, of fear. Right, there's more barbarians over here. Again, similar sort of strength. I think we should just engage them. I think we should just engage them. Let's, uh... Let's take it slowly, so we don't want to we don't want to rush in there. However, they are on they are on the spawning site of a of a city. They are on the one of the locations where you can actually build a city. So it's pretty important that we try and try and stop them from uh, from being there. Ah, so that is what I was worried about. This is exactly what I was worried about. I was a little bit worried that there would be some enemies behind. Uh, behind the existing ones, which is somewhat of a problem. I don't think that we can actually face up against them at all. Now, we could indeed decide to promote. We could indeed decide to promote our, our unit. We could spend 100 training and get that all done. Uh, 100 XP for the unit, uh, promote to brave, plus 10% against melee. I mean, that sounds like a good idea, to be honest. Why don't we move you back over here, and then we can't actually, because we don't have enough, uh, we don't have the ability to do that at the moment because we've already moved and we're not allowed to promote after movement but that's totally fine okay uh let's just continue to move the scout around shall we we'll continue to scout stuff see if there's anything let's go and harvest the sheep give us a little bit of a little bit of extra food and continue to explore the world mount amita not entirely not entirely convinced i said that even remotely correctly Oh, baby. Literally, baby. Uh, this is fantastic. This is fantastic. So we have removed my horrific, vengeful brother who still absolutely hates me. Uh, he's now second in line. Second in line for the throne, which is great. So we actually have Prince Mamericus Julius, which is absolutely delightful. What a wonderful little baby boy. That That is great. That is so great. And uh, as he grows up, we're going to be able to mold him into the leader that we want to uh, that we want to see, which is which is just great. I'm, I'm very happy with that. That's really, really cool. Right. When's my new warrior coming along? Five years. I tell you what, I haven't really I haven't really had a look uh, at what's going on in in Rome for a while. I tell you what, I do need to build a forum. We have leveled up in terms of culture, which is which is real nice. Very, very happy with that. Uh, let's choose the stone cutting research that I wanted to uh, to deal with uh, a little bit earlier. Epics or exploration? Brilliant. Let's open the law screen and have a little look because this is a law uh, that was just prompted by a uh, by a prompt. What is this? Epics uh, plus ten culture per unit killed. All right, that's good. Or exploration uh, movement bonus along the river. Scouts move on water. I mean, it's got to be epics, right? I mean, we are going to be doing... We're going to be doing a whole bunch of shenanigans. A whole bunch of shenanigans, given that we are a comm-based based civilization. Citizen defenses. Eager citizens of Roma have come forward, wishing to help support the city's defenses. They have the will. All they need is the direction. 
What shall we tell them? Ah, so this is the culture event. So you remember when I said uh, at the very start that, you know, there's a positive event that happens whenever you, whenever you level up the level of culture in your city. This is it. What do we want to do? Gain protective walls or conduct emergency training drills? Um, gain walls. Yeah, gain walls. Absolutely gain walls. We are, we're, you know, we're drowning in the amount of uh, training points that we have at the moment. We frankly do not need them. We do not need them at all. All right, we've discovered another tribe. Wonderful. Almost immediately after discovering the Gaul encampment, our troops are threatened by warriors at its borders. Insults are traded. Weapons are drawn. Our units stand at attention, ready to act on our commands. Um... Yeah, to be honest, to be honest, I've got the opportunity to either placate them and buy their goods as a gesture of goodwill, which would give me six science, which is nice, give me plus one wisdom as a trait to my uh, to my leader, or we take training points. However, there's a bit of a difference here. There's a bit of a difference here. There's a bit of a there's a bit of something else in the mix here. This is a very, very good, this is a very, very good op uh, option for us. Uh, well, both of them are actually very, very good. So, we either get, we either lose 100 gold, but gain 6 science, or, 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 we gain a citizen in Rome, and we become bold as well. Now, I've already talked about the fact that we've got an abundance of training points. However, that additional citizen in Rome is going to be, is going to be quite nice. I think... I think I might purchase. I think I might purchase. I really do value the extra six science. I mean, that is a that is a significant increase. And it also means that they don't hate me, which is really, really nice indeed. And if we go to... Uh, yeah, this isn't families. Uh, so yeah, there's, there's different... There's different... There's different ways to view a whole bunch of characters. So we can view the characters here. We can view the families here. We can view the empires here. We haven't actually discovered any other playable characters yet. However, the tribes, the Gauls, and the Danes, we're both on friendly terms with them both, even though it's cost us 160 gold to maintain that level of friendship, which is fine. Uh, we've got a list of cities there, and then we've got a list of worker units over here. So, you know, we're just keeping on top of everything. But yeah, that's fine. Oh, yes, please. Let's harvest the gold. Wonderful. Harvest the gems as well, which I apparently missed. Uh, harvest the sheep as well, which is great. And then we'll harvest some more sheep maybe uh, a little bit further on there. Okay, can we get you promoted now? Yes, let's get you promoted. Let's get you moved to a crit chance. No, I don't care about crit chance. I think I care about brave. Let's get you promoted. Brilliant. Our warrior unit has been hard at work training for battle and they're ready to take orders. Will you take the role of general and lead them? Um, I mean, no, I, I don't think I really want to do that quite at this moment in time. And I can promote you further should I wish to do so. How are we doing? Base strength, our base strength at the moment is 4, 4.8. So that's not too bad. We can get you promoted again. Uh, but that would cost us 200, 200 training points. And that is quite a lot of training points. But that's not a problem at all. All right, let's end the year up, go across to the next turn. Oh, look at that. It's our protective walls and also, wow, some really, really shoddy houses. I mean, they don't even look... Uh, wow. That's that's dreadful. Uh, speaking of, though, speaking of Roma, good news is that we've got this wonderful Shrine of Mars, which gives us plus two additional training points and also two culture, which means that we now have a consistent source of culture in the city. We're getting 3.1 each and every turn, which is very, very nice indeed. Very, 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 very cool. I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, we're also about to hit our first additional citizen, which is cool. We're about to hit, we're about to hit 100, 100, uh, 100 additional food, which is wonderful. And then, you know what we're able to do? That's right. We're able to allocate, not necessarily these citizens directly, but we get them trained up to become specialists. That's right. So... A specialist working at the shrine, as I've already alluded to, is an acolyte. A specialist working in the field is a farmer. It costs one citizen, but of course we don't have an additional citizen to spare, so we're gonna have to instead uh, we're gonna have to instead wait a little bit until we get that second citizen up and running. Just cancel the second warrior. We'll get you know a single warrior for now. That's not too bad. That is of course going to be boosted by the fact that we've now got an additional. Uh, Shrine of Mars, so that's great. We'll be able to produce this warrior just a little bit quicker. 
what have we got going on over here? Well, we built the treasury level 1. We can build the treasury level 2, if indeed that's something that we want to get done. Uh, it would give us more money, and the more money I have, the more I can pay off all of the neutral factions, apparently. That's great. I think I want the forum, though. The forum gives me more civics, and more civics means more production, right? I mean, it's as simple as that, right? It is as simple as that. What have we got over here? We have got the opportunity to spend some builder points. What do I want to build? I don't really know if there is anything that I specifically want to build right now. Uh, the opportunity to build a granary is one that I don't think I can pass up, to be honest. Build a farm there. I mean, yes, so we're connected to fresh water. I tell you what, if I build a granary right over here... Yeah, I think building a granary right here would be would be fantastic. Yeah. All right, well, let's get a granary built right over there because then after that we can build another farm right over here and then we can get some adjacency bonuses, which is uh which is brilliant. That makes me very very happy. So let's come in here, let's harvest the sheep and then let's immediately get the heck out of dodge, harvest the gold. Lovely stuff. You are now you are now known as the intrepid Brilliant. Ruins explored four times a hundred. Four hundred. Brilliant. And we've got even more legitimacy, which is nice as well. Heaven and Earth. Cool. What's the options? Plus 40 culture in Rome. King Romulus the Intrepid becomes exotic, which gives us two additional... Two additional... Uh, two additional uh, civics. I want no part in such rituals. Uh, no, I'm absolutely going to take part in such rituals. That's such a huge culture boost. Okay, very, very cool indeed. I should point out, by the way, I should point out, I can indeed abdicate the throne, if indeed I want to. Also, I'm 31 years old at the moment, and it may seem like I'm, you know, sequentially, subsequently, you know, continuing... That's not the term at all. I'm continuing to get more and more powerful. I am indeed continuing to get more and more powerful. I'm not going to get overpowered, though, because I'm going to die. <laughs> at least, that, that, well, it'll probably happen. It, it will happen. Uh, I am going to die, and at that point, I need to make sure that my uh, that my son is ready. Or indeed, my brother is ready, or someone is ready. Somebody better be ready to replace me. Right, so, warrior warrior unit over here. Are we ready to, are we ready to attack the barbarians? I don't really think I want to attack the barbarians quite yet. We'll just move up a little bit. Move up a little bit. Keep, uh, keep them in, keep them in sight. Yeah, we'll fortify you over there. Brilliant. Again, I'm just waiting for the warrior to be built in Rome. That's kind of what we're after uh, in the first instance. What should we build? I mean, we could build... We could build something religion-related. We haven't really discussed religion, but, you know, we will as time marches on. Or we can unlock the archive, which will give us an additional little boost of science. Or, alternatively, there's the Slinger. I think, you know, I think I'm after... I think I'm after the Slinger. Let's see if we can try and get some ranged units down. That would be, in the first instance, really, really nice. The only other thing that I... Ah, uh, we're too far from the friendly city to harvest resources. The only thing that we need to discover now is a playable character, and then we're pretty much there. We are pretty much there. Uh, Warlord Vandals presents herself at court. People traditionally cement goodwill with a newly met tribe by sharing the bounty of their next hunt in exchange for a gift. Uh, I mean, 50 trees. 50 trees is, frankly, a great deal for 30 food. Yeah, I'll take that any day of the week. Some more barbarians. Never a good sign. But that's, on the whole, not too bad. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to force these guys to march. And we're instead going to see if we can try and just uh, march around a little bit more. See if there's anything else to discover over here. We've got a whole bunch of uh, a whole bunch of points that we can spend, a whole bunch of orders that we are looking to spend. Ah, a haughty barbarian warlord strides into court demanding an audience. Friendship will benefit us both. We only treat uh, we only treat with our equals. We only trade with our equals, presumably. Although I do not have more than two courage, unfortunately. That's a great shame. That's a great great shame. I have negative one courage. Which is a bit of a bummer. However, we can maintain a truce. That's not a problem. We've got two more points. Let's use those two more points. That's the edge of the map over there. Fine. Okay, so I've discovered just about every single flippin' tribe in the world on the map. And yet, I'm still unable to discover another playable 
faction. Bit of a bummer if you ask me, but hey-ho. Okay, Shrine is up and running, which is very, very nice indeed. That's the Shrine of Venus. Gives us a little food boost and also uh, plus two culture as well. A quarry, build a Shrine of Diana, plus one level for new units. I mean, yes, not bad, not bad at all. I do kind of want to build a farm. Yeah, I think, I think that's what I'm after, actually. I think I'm after a, a farm. It's not ideal. It's not ideal because it is arid. Because it is arid, it's not exactly... It's not exactly perfect. It's not exactly perfect. Well, you know what? We'll do it anyway. It's adjacent to a volcano, and therefore we get a, a little boost from it anyway. So, uh, I guess we'll get that built. That's totally fine. Please, dear goodness, just let me discover... Let me discover someone. Another barbarian... No, not a barbarian. There's a difference, potato. Another tribe city. Okay, we might return there and do a little bit more exploring. There's not an auto-explore function, and I tell you what, that would be really, really nice at a moment like this, for sure. Right, two more turns on the on the warriors. Uh, Judaism founded in Kalu. Wonderful. Well, as you can see, Kalu is another is another city, it's another empire, the Assyrian Empire, I believe, which is kind of cool. Where is it? Yes, it's here. We can't actually see it as another empire quite yet, although at least we know roughly where it is. And by roughly where it is, I mean at least we know where it is. Let's choose some research. Uh, barracks? Barracks seems like a pretty darn good idea. Also, labor force as well seems like a pretty good idea. That'll give us roads, slavery, and freedom as well. I think we'll go for barracks for now. Why the heck not, right? Alright. What have we got going on over here? Still nothing. I'm going from hilltop to hilltop to see if there is anything that I can find. Star charts. Ooh. Five orders and gain a scout. Join the court. Great scientist. I mean... A scout is really, really nice. Plus five orders. This is a this is a cracking ancient ruin, that's for sure. I'll take a great scientist, to be honest. And we've also we've also found a brand new tribe as well. Uh, King Romulus, the intrepid, becomes intelligent. Governor plus two per culture level. Uh, sure, I think we probably want to become intelligent. Or we can gain Tactician, no longer Schemer. Plus one reveal range, no uh, extra unit consumption costs when outside borders, all units, uh, critical chance. Uh, to be honest, I think this is... I think this is way better. I mean, Intelligence is nice. It's two extra culture. However, we get... We get a bunch of... Yeah, I mean, why the heck Why the heck wouldn't we take this? I think that's absolutely what we want to do. Okay, cool. Right, 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 right. That did, I believe, get rid of our... Of some of our other bonuses. But I think that's okay. I think that's okay. I just noticed that our science rate did indeed decrease. But that's fine. All right, your brother's servant comes with a request. Remus wishes to procure gold from the treasury to purchase silk for new fineries. He insists uh, that is required for his royal position. Hmm. Is endeared. I mean, look, if I could if I could spend a little bit of money to make sure that he doesn't hate my guts, then that's what I consider a, a deal. Let's do it. I mean, we've we've got plenty of money at the moment anyway, so that's totally fine. Our warrior is looking is looking pretty darn good. I tell you what, I'm gonna get this promoted as soon as we possibly can. Uh, versus damage units plus ten percent. Yeah, you know what? Let's get you moved to bloodthirsty. Now we still can't move you after we've given you your uh, your promotion, but that is totally fine. That is totally totally fine. I'm uh, I'm not too. Not too dissatisfied with that. We can indeed add a general if indeed we are interested. However, 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 however. Fighter from Urban. Tiberius Julius the Younger. You don't seem terrible. Fighting from Urban, 25%. I mean, that's not not great at all, to be honest. Duke Remus. Yeah, you know what? Let's get my brother 
Let's get my brother in charge of, uh, in charge of this army. Sure, why the heck not? Congratulations, congratulations, brother. You've just been promoted, I guess, kind of, on some weird level. Uh, let's get you moved over here, and let's get a farm immediately constructed in close proximity to the granary, of course. Let's continue to progress round and down the world, see if we can try and find another city. One of these days, one of these days, we're going to discover another civilization. Maybe we'll just walk into them. Maybe we'll just walk into their, uh, to their capital. It's as simple as that. Alrighty, what have we got? We need to decide some, uh, something to produce in Antium. Well, I mean, look, we've got plenty of stone. We've got totally, totally more than enough stone. We're recommended to build a slinger. I think we want to build a forum, to be honest. We get four additional civics per year at the expense of minus 0 0.5 uh, stone per year. I mean, that's that's something that I can very much tolerate. We do need to get an additional quarry. Hey, congratulations. Your wife has given birth to a daughter, Lucilla. Brilliant. That's wonderful. Uh-oh, an indifferent queen. Your wife, the queen consort, spends more and more nights at her private estate outside the capital. When she visits the palace, she treats you with cold indifference. Meanwhile, your beautiful lowborn hunting companion has drawn your attention. Shall we arrange some private time for you? Oh, no. We do enjoy each other's company. You know what? Why the heck not? Why the heck not? We do enjoy each other's company. Let's freaking go. Let's freaking go. Let's see what comes of it. Right. It's time to move my army... I say my army. It's time to move my army into into combat. Yeah, we are going to take you out in a couple of turns. However, I'm going to wait until next turn when my other soldiers can come up and uh, do some damage. Because, of course, these guys are bloodthirsty and they deal additional damage to already damaged units. So that is going to be a, a nice little wombo combo right there uh, as well. Cool. All right. What do we want to do with you? Honestly, a quarry wouldn't be terrible. Let's get a quarry built right here, shall we? That's going to give us a metric ton of stone, which is great. But hey, finally, we've discovered a player. Oh, that is brilliant. Well, that's that's fantastic. Looks like you've not got very much going on here, my dude. So that's kind of interesting, at least. Uh, interesting to know. Is that a river? That's a river over there. That's fine. All right, so we've discovered this guy, King Ashrobanipal. Cool. That's very, very nice indeed. Can't complain. After disappearing for months, your beautiful hunting companion has requested a private audience. She presents you with a child born of your passionate affair. You agree to let her raise the baby uh, at court as your own, but outside of the royal line. She smiles, pleased with the outcome. King Romulus has an illegitimate child. Uh, Queen consort Hortensia Julia is estranged from King Romulus. You have a new illegitimate daughter. <laughs> Yay me! <laughs> Go me! Okay, does my family hate me? Does my family hate you? It's still uh, Mamercus who is gonna who's gonna take over. We're gonna start getting we're gonna start getting options upon how we decide to uh, deal with that in a bit. However, or we're gonna I guess we're gonna start to see how we can train him up and teach him to to be uh, to be the ruler that we want when he's a little bit older because he's only seven at the moment. So. Pretty, pretty young at the moment. I am pretty legitimate, though. I, I've got a lot of legitimacy. A lot of legitimacy going around. Got plenty, plenty of legitimacy. Okay, let's move up here. Yes, this is good. So, let's see if we can try and attack. I'm going to actually move up here and then attack. Brilliant. And then we're going to move... Actually, cannot move you in because we're a little bit far away. Uh, move you in over there, and then move you in. Okay, there we go. That worked perfectly. So we did a little bit of extra damage to this unit because it was already damaged, and we've got the bloodthirsty trait on us, which is great. We can only attack once with each unit every turn, so that's fine. Uh, we're producing an acolyte in three years. This combat's probably not going to last that long. However, when this combat's done we will start producing another settler to settle a brand new city there. Grave Circle. A grave Circle in the tree appears to belong to a great tribe. The shaft includes the remains of a ruler, his spouse, and children. And a, a retinue? Is that how you say it? A retinue of servants? Foreign ruins and their treasure have captured the imagination of the nobility, especially the Valeri. You might consider using some of the recent findings to gain their favor or not. 
I mean, do they hate me at the moment? I don't know if the families dislike me. They actually are upset with me. They're upset from disloyalty. And they're missing their gems, their luxuries. So that is having a knock-on effect to the uh, to the second city, Antium, the second city. So minus 10, minus 10 civics, minus 10 production of training points. Yeah, okay. So I think that's a great idea to, to give them a gift. Makes them happy. And it means that we are back on top of things in the city as well, which is really, really good too. All right, more and more and more flipping tribes. You just can't move. You can't move for all the tribes that we've got. Right, the turn is the next one. Or, uh, or on the turn of the next one, we will indeed engage the barbarians. Goodness gracious me, that was a little bit loud. The sound has yet to be balanced in this game, apparently. Right, let's... Uh... Brilliant. We've now reserved... We've now reserved a city site. Fantastic. Go me. Please, just, just... If you could be a little bit quieter, video game, that would be fantastic. Yes, we're on cooldown because we've just conquered. That's fine. Right, two more years, two more years, then we've got... A, uh, an Acolyte. We're going to have that Acolyte immediately start work on the Shrine of Mars over there, which is great. What do we want you to build? I mean, you could build a quarry over here, which is not terrible. Not terrible at all, in fact. In fact, I dare say that that would be pretty darn good. We are... We're in a bad place in terms of stone at the moment, but not a terrible place, because we are going to fix up our stone production with a brand new quarry right next to Mount Vesuvius, which is very, very cool, and also an additional quarry over here. That's great. I mean, our growth rate must be pretty substantial in uh, in Rome at the moment. Plus 13.7. That's not bad. That's not bad. For a, for a city that is primarily concerned mostly with the construction of civics, that's not bad at all. Tell you what, though. We do need to, we do need to try and get some more... Uh, some more, uh, some more projects on the go that are constructed using civics. So getting the treasury up and running, getting the forum up and running, all of these are pretty darn good. We do pretty much deplete the entirety of our stone. However, 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 we can indeed buy stone if that's something that we're interested in doing. So I can use my money at any time to buy any amount of stone. I can buy, buy 10 stone. Look, just for, for a quick little example there, pretty cool. All right, some barbarians over here. Uh, that does kind of scare me a little bit, but that's fine. Okay, we can't harvest that. Nothing here. Nothing really of interest. All right, sovereignty, garrison improvements, tyranny, uh, constitution. Okay, well, let's do that. I need more laws anyway. Laws are pretty cool. Uh, I should point out, by the way, that the way that you increase this civics rate is, first of all, by, uh, you know, the leader bonuses, so Kim, Kim Rongmilis' uh, charisma, but also any additional unspent civic points, they just go into the national stockpile, and the national stockpile can be, you know, spent on stuff, stuff like, uh, you know, laws and, you know, uh, changing, your, changing your inheritance options, stuff like that. Okay, there we go, we did it. Yay to me, yay to me. Upgrades the Barbarian hovels in 10 years. Okay, I need to clearly send somebody back to sit on this site until... Until I choose to use it. Right, brilliant. You're just gonna fortify. You're just gonna fortify. Just chill out over there for a little bit. No worries, no rush. Totally, totally fine. Yeah. Brilliant. Let's continue to bring you around. Let's get that harvested. Harvest the horses as well. Brilliant. So that consumes that consumes orders every time that uh, that happens, but still a worthwhile investment. Humble emissaries from Assyria kneel before the throne, unable to meet your searching eye. They've come to request aid. Future generations of our people will remember your generosity. Please, we have no place else to turn. Um, send them 180 food. Yeah, sure, I'll do that. That sounds like uh, that sounds like a fantastic option. I mean, they're far away, so I probably don't want to conquer them with troops anyway. I would imagine. Right, two years away from building a forum. How long will it take me to build a settler? It's going to take me seven years to build a settler. I'm going to move. I'm going to move the settler to the front of the queue because I want to try and get as many as we possibly can. Uh, why? 
I've got the Acolyte. I've got the Acolyte already in there, so that's kind of good. Fine. All right. Brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Happy with that. We will fix our stone situation in just a second. All right. I mean, this is great. This is fantastic. Um, In the next episode, we'll be able to deal more with all of the issues that are arising. We're going to continue to explore uh, the area. What can I say? I'm enjoying the spit out of this game. This is um this is a nifty little game. It is very like Civilization, but that's no bad thing as far as I'm concerned. And uh, you know, seemingly the uh, the dynasty the dynasty elements make for a very interesting game. I like it. Uh, ladies and gents, I've been Obed Potato. Thank you very, very much for watching. Thank you very much to Banana Nanana and C Senpai, the two twenty-five dollar plus Patreon supporters over on Patreon. Thanks also to all of the other fantastic Orbital Potato Incorporated Patreon supporters, uh, also of uh, Patreon.com forward slash Orbital Potato. Thanks very much for watching, folks. I'll see you next time. Bye.